Hello and welcome to this overview of Roland Pro AV's V8 HD video switcher. With eight HDMI inputs, multiple effects layers, this is a very powerful standalone unit in a fairly compact footprint. Before we begin, talk about some key features on this product. This is an all HDMI workflow, so you can easily combine cameras and graphics with eight inputs. And there are three assignable outputs for your video mix as well, including an aux out for a center screen or downstage uh, monitor. It is a five layer effects engine. So there's two picture and picture layers and a downstream keyer each. All three of those are capable of using a chroma key to add multiple graphics layers. So that's a total of three chroma keys for graphics at once. And two of those can be windowed as scalable picture in pictures. And some essential tools built right in. There's a digital audio mixer with EQ and compression for all analog and digital inputs. Built-in LCD monitor with multi-view and menu display. Boss foot switch control with a FS5U or FS6 and more. So I think there might be too much to cover here, but we will try and get all of it. So we're gonna go over panel operation as well as the inputs and outputs. So we'll kind of go back and forth up on your left, the multi-view and menu. So you can make selections here, push enter on that knob, exit back a level menu to get out. And this is program. So when I switch from input one to input two, you can do that, you can do cut, you can do dissolve. Notice that this is AB mixing. If you prefer a program preset where the red is always the top row and green is always the bottom row, you can just go into the system menu, find that setting, and you can change it to program preset. But I'm gonna keep it in AB for the rest of this demo. So to start, let's talk about the inputs and outputs for this as well. So this is the A bus or, or program row. This is the uh, B bus or preview row. So just whichever source is green is queued up and then you transition and they swap positions. Um, so we say eight cross points. So eight inputs each assigned to a cross point, but there's also still images. So input A, for example, that is not a, um, uh, that is not a HDMI input. That is one of the still images that I imported. And uh, I have a bunch more loaded in there. This can internally store eight still images into memory. So that's a nice feature. And um, once you see the free uh, iPad remote app um, come into this workflow, you can see some of the advantages of having uh, still images um, at the ready. So I'm going to start... Uh, digging into the inputs and outputs. So the first six, uh, first six inputs are uh, 720p, 1080i, or 1080p, depending on what you set the output format to in the system menu. So here, if I go into system, you can see I have it set to 1080p, 59.94. So in that situation, your sources can be 1080i or 1080p, and it will convert either to the output format be it 1080i or 1080p. The exception is if it's 720p output, all the sources on inputs one through six need to be 720p. Now the exception to this, you can see it says scalar underneath seven and eight. So those are multi-format worry-free inputs. What's that mean? Automatically resizes the source's input resolution to match the output resolution. You can also further resize and reposition the image in the video input menu for those two inputs. On the output side, you can see there's three and the third one says menu. That means that the menu is always displayed on output three. That's actually, that's actually this display that you see up here in the top left. So if I go to video output, you see I can change what the designation is. So if I HDMI output one I'm using, if I made this aux, if I go to these aux row buttons now, I can cut switch that source. So that's my center screen uh, feed or downstage monitor. I'm gonna keep it on program for the rest of this demo. So in addition to that, you have uh, unbalanced stereo RCA line in and line out. But all those HDMI inputs can also do two channels of digital audio. So if you have a, a, a wireless mic that you wanna connect 
to a uh, camera and you can run that signal over HDMI. And then you can use EQ and compression on the V8 HD to process that audio signal. And those two quarter inch inputs are for foot switches like the Boss FS5U or FS6. So you could have anywhere from two to one to four uh, switches that can be assigned to uh, any command that you want in the menu. USB memory port you can use for importing stills, um, but you can also press capture image, choose the still slot you want to overwrite, and then choose the live input that you want to uh, capture from. So that's uh, two different ways to bring in still images. And so going back here, we also have that remote port. So that's a USB 2.0 port that is connected to a Apple Wi-Fi camera adapter, which in turn would then be converting it USB to lightning for your iPad. On the side, you have a headphone jack and the power switch, and there's a little level control for the headphones. So that pretty much covers the IO on this unit. Still a lot to cover up here. Um, so notice that too, this is not just aux selections you can choose picture and picture source as well as a memory preset. And memory presets are a huge part of the V8 workflow, especially with the most recent 1.10 update. Also, before we jump into that, I wanna show you split and VFX. So you can do a split screen easily here, um, or you can also do um, some visual effects that manipulate color and distort the video in creative ways. So if you want to have a little fun with that, you can just go into the split slash VFX menu and uh, you can also modify the effect with these knobs here. Um, addition on the panel, there's output fade, um, just like on like the V1. And then you have these user buttons. So you can do, you can freeze the video. You can do auto switching and auto switching will cycle through the inputs at intervals that you specify um, or you can also have an audio source um, be the sync source um, for the switching as well. So if you have music and you want to switch to the tempo, um, you can do that through uh, auto switching. Those are also reassignable. And one of the main things you would want to reassign them for would be the um, record control. So um, we have a compatibility list on the support page for this product of uh, Atomos monitor recorders that you can trigger record start and stop on them. And so you could map that to, if you're not using auto switching, you could map it to this user button and it will send the record command over HDMI. Also with some select Canon cameras, if you turn on HDMI timecode, you can get a little record indicator light from that Canon camera so that you know if it's recording or not. Now, it does not trigger the, the recording on the Canon, but you can use that to verify that um, you're recording ISOs from uh, you know any compatible cameras that you have um, in the production area. So next we're gonna cover effects and we're gonna kind of do it all through the context of presets. I have a bunch of presets loaded and I think this is a good time to bring in the iPad remote app here. So, here it is, it's connected with the Apple Wi-Fi camera adapter. And so it is a copy of the switcher. And also what's cool about this is that I went ahead and labeled all the inputs uh, prior to this. So you can go into the um, app, you can do it through the menu as well, but I recommend the app where you can kind of just go through, label all the HDMI inputs and all the stills. And that way you have more uh, more control over determining which presets to recall. And before we jump to the presets, um, right here, you can see you have the channel strip for the HDMI audio. You have uh, presets um, for, and starting point for EQ and compressor. And um, then you can cycle through all the different channels. So you can see I named them based on, you know, the musicians that are in the footage that we have here. And on the main fader, you can adjust the uh, limiter and multi-band compressor as well as a mastering EQ. Another cool feature on this, and I promise we'll get to the memory presets, is 
that you see here input assign i can actually have stills displayed on the multi view here so if i actually kind of just you know went through some of these um you know those are some of the stills that are loaded into it uh, but you can choose whether it's an hdmi input or one of the eight stills so you have this kind of input assign matrix that you can utilize and you can see everything that you named shows up on it so you have easy reference to your content for production so this expanded memory preset menu is new to version 1.10 so if you do not see it on your unit you just need to update and get the latest app from the app store so as you can see this is quite visual it has um picture in pictures which source is assigned to them in the corner there that's the downstream keyer effect and what's assigned to that and then also background layer which shot and you can do up to 24 presets with this so these are combinations of the various effects that we we're talking about picture in picture one and two and dsk or downstream keyer so these are stacked on top of each other so you have preview then program then you have picture in picture one picture in picture two and then finally the dsk on top so you know this is a empty preset right here and you know, if I turn on these effects, you just see there's kind of two standard pictures and picture and pictures. And I can recall uh, my presets off of here, or I can use the app to do it as well. So also with this latest update, the DSK will now fade in and out. It used to be just the picture and pictures. So um, this is much more robust and really expands the possibilities for your workflow. So I'm gonna recall preset number two to start. And you can see I have the Roland logo is a DSK, and then I have two picture-in-picture -picture windows. And with these, you can you can move them with the knobs. You can dynamically resize them by pushing and twisting. And then the DSK, you can adjust the level of the key effect. I set it up to remove a green, for instance, right? So I did a chroma key here, and then it's green, and then I choose the amount of uh, level and gain, which is tied to these two knobs. So to access level and gain for the picture in pictures, um, you'd have to change them to a chroma type, which I will bring up in a bit. We're gonna cycle through a couple more presets here. So here's another still image in the DSK. So that's like my conference overlay, and I can have you know an interview side by side, um, or maybe I want a speaker and presentation. So here is a. Uh, combination of you know speaker and presentation with that conference overlay and uh, so here we're going to kind of get into one of the uh, key uh, keyed picture in pictures so here i have the a circle picture in picture you can also crop it to make it um, square instead of um, a uh, instead of a rectangle and then i have uh, this dsk is the uh, lower third that I created from a still image. And I got this tip jar for the band. So you can see this I cropped a bit. And so when you see, I'm gonna take the level setting all the way down for this. So, and also a little trick too is when you're adjusting the value knob, if you push and twist, it'll go 10 times faster. So you can see that I did some cropping and so actually crop the pip window so that this would fit a little tighter in the corner there. So, the, you know, wherever I wanted to put it, I had flexibility, right? Um, so that's an example of a picture in picture that was keyed out. So I'm gonna just reload it back to those preset settings. And so I have a tip jar and these assets too are, indivi you can individually enable and disable them. Additionally, there's a new feature in the system menu for effects transitions. So if you turn this on, whenever you do a cut auto or T-bar transition, it'll swap between preview and on for these three effect layers. So for example, you see I do this. And so, you know, a good example of that would be if I queued this logo on eight, and then I just did that and it all fades out. And then if I wanted to bring it back in, I can do that. So again, this is optional. And also too, um, another thing to show you when it comes to recalling presets is you can lock off different groups of settings. So for instance, you know, you may want 
the input to not be affected by the preset recall. So whatever's on program, if you want it to stay and just have complete control over that, turn video cross point off. And then whenever you do a preset recall, it won't change the program source. So, you know, the red LED indicator here, of whichever source is selected. But I'm gonna keep it on because the way my presets are set up, they're designed to utilize specific inputs, whether it's the wide shot or the, the band logo. So for example, I have a couple more here. So I have this one. So I did two circle picture and pictures on the band logo background with the song title lower third. Um, and then I have one here as well of, you know, a close up and then the wide shot of the show. So, you know, again, you can load up to 24 of these. I didn't go that far, but that's just to give you an idea of how uh, robust this functionality is on the V8 HD. Next, I'm going to show you the Boss FS5U foot switch. And with this, uh, you just set it up in the preset, I'm sorry, CTL slash EXP menu. You can put up to two foot switches in. So if you do two FS6s, you can have four switches at your, um, at your use. And so for the FS5U, you just do control B assign. I said it is cut and I'm just gonna show you, there are a lot of commands you can choose from here. You can see that this list goes on and on and on. So, um, Full list is in the uh, reference manual on the uh, on support page for the V8HD. So, but yeah, I just need to assign it to CTLB for this single button switch. And you can see it cuts whenever I step on it, step on it with my thumb. So uh, that's an optional accessory and uh, that will enable you to, um, you know, kind of help with hands-free operation and, you know, further streamlining your production, you know, between the control panel and the iPad, you know, it may be helpful to have a, a foot switch available or in a strategic position uh, during your production. So additionally, I want to show you on the remote app that uh, picture in picture setup can also be, um, done here. So what I'll do is here, I'm going to do it on memory six here. So see, there's my circle pip that I have set up. I could dynamically resize it and move it around. And notice when I was talking earlier too about the layer order. I mean, this preset's a great example. So picture in picture one is underneath picture in picture two, which is underneath the DSK. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're designing your, um, your layer combinations and presets. And um, if you need to swap anything, you can swap with this command here. And so now you have, this is pip one. So you have some flexibility there too. And you can also copy pip settings from one to the other if you want to quickly duplicate it and then reposition the duplicated picture in picture window. And also for that record control that I mentioned, you can see it's right here. And so you don't need to necessarily assign it to one of the two user buttons if you, you know, plan to use the uh, remote app as a part of your uh, workflow. So, um, what I want to do now is just kind of uh, go back to some of those key points on the uh, V8 HD. So this is an all HDMI workflow. You can easily combine cameras and graphics with eight inputs, eight HDMI inputs. And you have three assignable outputs for your mix, including that aux out for a center screen or downstage monitor. The five layer effects engine, you saw the two picture and picture layers and a downstream keyer. There's a lot that you can do. Um, you know, unlocking those creative possibilities. You have 24 presets and you get a visual indicator of what is assigned to what and what the shape is of those picture in pictures. You can even name those, the presets themselves. So if you have, um, you know, some production names that you wanna um, put in, you can edit the name of each uh, memory as well. And of course, the essential tools also built right in that digital audio mixer with EQ and compression, built in LCD monitor for your multi-view, the boss foot switch control that I demonstrated. And, uh, you know, there's a ton of features in this product. So, um, you know, a lot of possibilities for, you know, managing, uh, you know, good number of cameras 
in a live production. So thank you again for watching. If you have any questions, just contact us and support at Roland Pro AV. Happy to answer your questions. Thank you again and take care.